Hi guys, um, right, so today I'm going to talk to you about the exercise session, heart rate and then training zones. Okay, so the exercise session. This can be a training session, a match or a competition of some sort and it is always split into three sections. So a warm-up, a main activity and a cool-down. Okay, so the warm-up. This is done to gradually raise your body temperature and your heart rate, okay, and helps improve the exchange of oxygen from the blood. It is normally a cardiovascular warm-up consisting of something like skipping, running, cycling, okay, to get your heart rate uh, increased. And it is essential to prevent injury, to improve your performance, it can help practice your skills before a match or the event, and also to prepare yourself mentally so you're ready to perform or play. The second part of a warm-up is stretching. Now this takes on two forms. You can have static stretching or dynamic or ballistic stretching. These are on the move. Static stretching are normally held for about 10 to 15 seconds. Um, you need to make sure you don't strain for those ones. And also dynamic ones, moving on, are things like skipping, high knees, lunges, heel flicks, and is aimed at replicating some of the movements that you would do in the sport. The final part of your warm-up should be skill-specific. Um, this is things like having a ball, including that, so goalkeepers would practice catching crosses and that kind of thing, and it should finish just before the main event starts so that your muscles do not get cold and stiffen up before you actually play. Moving on to the main activity, now this can take a few different forms. It could be a training session uh, using one of the me methods of training. It could be your, uh, your match, so if you're taking part in a netball match or a hockey match, it could actually be the match itself. It could also be in extreme situations, um, training for a title fight. In the main activity, uh, it's des obviously you were designed for uh, to raise your heart rate, and it will normally be above, okay, the normal level, and it can last for up to twenty minutes, even even more, depending on what kind of activity you're doing. Uh, it also depends on the objective of your training. So it could be a match or continuous training, or it might even be interval training. So it really does depend on what kind of thing you are doing. It also depends on the uh, performance level of skill, the time you have available, and whether it's pre-season, mid-season, the performance body type and their ability. And lastly, it can depend on whether it's a skills or a fitness session. That could make a, make a lot of difference because everyone's different and your body cannot take a lot of high-intensity stuff too soon. Moving on to the cool-down, which is the final part of an exercise session. This does the opposite of a warm-up. It gradually returns the body and the heart rate to normal um, and to the normal temperature. Each training session and competitive situation should finish with a cool-down. This helps get rid of lactic acid and prevents you being sore on the next day. The lactic acid is actually a form of poison, so if you do not cool down effectively or properly, then you are more at risk of injury either the next day or the next training session, so it is a really important part of your exercise session. It normally lasts 10 to 15 minutes and includes things like jogging, um, even down into a walk. It also includes static stretching, which are, um, these are held for 30 to 35 seconds as opposed to 10 to 15 in a warm-up. You need to really make sure that you're holding them um, for that long so you are getting with that lactic acid. Okay, right, we're now going to move on to comparing two different exercise sessions. Um, this is really important that you know how these can be used differently depending on your methods of training and also your principles of training. Okay, so we're going to look at two different athletes. I've got my friend here, um, Usain, who's going to do session A for me. And I've also got my friend Kelly Holmes, who's going to do session B. Two different sessions. One's training for a 100 metre sprint and the other one is training for a 1500 metre run. So just take a, take a minute or so to just look at these two different sessions and what they're required to do. You might have to pause the video to, so you can look at these two and take some notes. As you can see, session A is with 90% effort, okay, and that's sprinting, which is in the anaerobic training zone. Session B is working at 75%, um, which is in her aerobic training zone, so you need to know those two for your exam. What is important to note here is that both athletes are required to take their heart rate just after they've uh, worked out, and then their recovery rate every minute for 10 minutes. So, anaerobic exercise, what is that? That is exercising without oxygen. So the exercise is done in short bursts and the heart cannot supply the blood and oxygen to the muscles as fast as the cells can use them. Therefore, you are working without oxygen. 
Session A was an anaerobic session. Normally, in an anaerobic session, it is a very high intensity and you'll find that performers will be out of breath straight afterwards. That brings us to an aerobic training session, which is with oxygen. Okay, this is where the exercise is not too fast and is normally pretty steady, so the heart can supply all the oxygen needed to the working muscles. Session B, which was Kelly, uh, doing a 1500 meter training session, was an aerobic session. It was at a lower intensity and the poor performer is able to breathe throughout her exercise. So what can we learn from those two training sessions? Well, they were both interval training, okay? Um, although methods can vary depending on the principles of training. So individual needs and specificity need to be taken into consideration when you're planning a training session. Both performers would need a good warm up and cool down after each session. Um, and both would plot their heart rate afterwards to monitor their effort. So it's important to think about how these might differ depending on how hard they were working. Therefore, we're also considering the FIT principle. You need to know this for your exam. Okay, so we've looked at comparing two training sessions. We're now going to look at um, analysing these training sessions, okay, looking at heart rate and then making sure people are working at the correct training zones. Okay, so what is heart rate? Simply the number of times that the heart beats per minute. It is really important that you add on the per minute because if you don't and you answer an exam question with just the number of times the heart beats, you will not be awarded a mark. An average person's resting heart rate is between 60 to 80 beats per minute. Resting heart rate is obviously when the person is resting. Normally a good indicator of this is when you wake up in the morning. So if you take your heart rate, resting heart rate in the morning, that will be the most accurate resting heart rate recording you can get. It would differ, obviously, depending on age okay, and a person's fitness. The fitter the person is, then the lower the resting heart rate normally should be. Working heart rate is the measurement of your heart rate during or immediately after exercise. Now, the most accurate reading of this would be to wear a heart rate monitor, but simply, if you haven't got one of those, you can just take your heart rate straight after you finish. Your working heart rate is a really good measure of which training zone you're working in. So if you are working between 60 to 80%, you'd be in your aerobic zone, and 80 to 90 would be your anaerobic training zone. Your maximum heart rate is simply the maximum number of times your heart can beat per minute. And this is calculated by 220 minus your age. So for example, if you're a 16-year-old, you'll do 220 minus 16. It would give you a maximum heart rate of 204. Okay, so moving on to recovery rate. This is simply the measure of how long it takes your heart to return to normal, okay? Um, so your resting rate. The sooner the heart rate returns to normal, then generally the fitter your person is. If you take session A and session B earlier, they both recorded their heart rate for 10 minutes after exercise, so every minute for 10 minutes. Um, they would have been able to plot their heart rate and on a graph like uh, shown here, they would have seen a decline and return to their resting rate. I've already mentioned training zone, okay, aerobic and anaerobic training zones, but you need to know how to calculate these. As you can see from the graph, the older you are, the lower your training zone. So your aerobic is between 60 to 80% of your maximum heart rate, and anaerobic training zone is between 80 to 90% of your maximum heart rate. Now, any, any questions you'll get will normally be based around your aerobic training zone. I very much doubt that the anaerobic training zone will feature, but just in case, there we go, you do know it. The example shown is calculated for a 15-year-old, so I do 220 minus 15 to work out your maximum heart rate, which is 205, and then I would simply times that 205 by 0 0.6 to get 123, and then by 0 0.8 to get the upper threshold. Okay, so there's the lower threshold and then the upper threshold. You need to know those two terms. That concludes our video for today. Uh, make sure you've taken notes on what you've seen. If there's anything you're unsure of, then feel free to come and speak to me. You'll need to be able to relate it to yourself or other individuals. Okay, so make sure you know everything that we've covered. And it's all linked to the methods of training and the principles of training. You need to be able to link it all together. Please make sure you've completed the one point. 1.4 booklet. If you do not get all of this done, then we will I'll give you a little bit of time to do it in the lesson. You'll be completing questions okay, in the lesson next week and it will be related to everything in this video. So you must, must, must have watched it. I'll try and make it as fun as possible and I apologise for going over the eight minutes that I originally said. Thank you and goodbye.